Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the transpose function and how we can transpose a range of data to another area of our workbook and still retain a link between the two. So if you change something in the original, it will update the transposed area. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have a data range here that has 13 columns and seven rows high. And I just want to transpose it down below, but I want to keep the two linked. So if I make any changes to this original, it will update the transposed area. So again, 13 columns and seven rows. So the first thing we need to do is highlight an area that is the area that we want the transposed data to end up in. So since we have something that's 13 rows and seven columns, I'm going to want something that is seven columns and 13 rows. Now, once I have that area highlighted, keeping the active cell in the upper left corner, I need to type in the formula equals transpose tab and then highlight my array, or I can type in that array, close my parentheses, but instead of hitting enter, I need to hit control shift enter. And what that does, it creates an array. And as you can see up in the formula bar, it inserts those curly brackets around it. And since this is an array, we can't do any modifications directly to this data in here, or we can't delete a link or, or one of the cells that is linked to the original data. We can format it any way we want, though. So for instance, if I want to go ahead and add borders, um, maybe I want to highlight this area, change the color, change the font. I'm going to bold it, center it, etc. And again, use that same for the columns. And I can even format the data differently. Maybe I just want to make it into um, accounting style here. But it still remains linked so that, for example, let's say I change this value here to something dramatic, 50,000, for example. Notice it automatically changed that same corresponding cell in the transposed data. And that's how we can do that in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day, and happy excelling.